Spinneberg, Germany. Sun dims and goes out for between five and seven hours. Temperatures around the world plummet. In response, while other areas reach 117 degrees Fahrenheit, much higher than normal. The axis tilt for Rome indicates 40 degrees southward. Meanwhile, the dwarf sun lights the sky. When we see the sun, it is flashing, showing a black dot as it overpowers the camera filter. The light from the sun is descending gradually from left to right, not setting. Bright, then darkens, then bright, then darkens through to 2300 hours. And then in minutes, dark until midnight, where it's seen totally black. And then one, two, three in the morning, totally black. And then daylight at four in the morning from the dwarf sun. So these stills are Pinneberg, Germany, between the 1st through to the 2nd of July. Now this series starts at 5 p.m. on the 1st of July, 1700 hours. 6 p.m., 1800 hours. And then the next slide, you can see a huge flare from the sun and how all of those clouds in the previous slide have dissipated. That's what happens when the sun flares. It heats the clouds and they uh, evaporate. And then within the next hour, you can see that the clouds are back again and uh, really thick in the sky. Nine o'clock, the same. Now, this is at 10 o'clock, 2200 hours on the 1st of July. Sunset is actually at 21.54, so six minutes before this capture. Then an hour later at 2300 or 11 p.m. on July the 1st, the sky is still brightly illumined. Daylight. And yet the sun set an hour and eight minutes earlier. Midnight, totally dark. It's crossed over into July the 2nd just three seconds after midnight, July the 2nd now. July the 2nd at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and then bam, at 4 a.m., three seconds after 4 a.m. on July the 2nd. And yet the sunrise is at 4.54, 54 minutes later. We have dark skies and just by one hour it's bright daylight blue skies. But it is certain the light is from the dwarf sun. Light followed 54 minutes later, the sun rises. Now below is Rome at midday, showing Venus, the sun, Jupiter, Mars and the moon, how it should be. It's noon looking straight up in the astronomy program and uh, it's in the constellation Pollux. The twins, which seems to be the thing... <laughs> Doesn't it? Lately. Uh -huh. Oh, it's our song, babe. <laughs> there it is. Oh, oh. I will try not to sing. <laughs> Venus, Sun, Jupiter, Mars, and the Moon. And this is actually what it's looking like, Rome at noon, but the sun is south of the sun, equals a pole shift. Now, at Rome, noon, the moon is south of the sun, equals a pole shift. For the moon to be on the line, that's the same line as the sun, we'd have to be on the equator. Now, this is what we observed at 12 noon, July the 3rd, 2013. The moon in a straight line east-west with the sun. This, the indications are the moon orbit remains unchanged and the pole axis has shifted 2,889 miles southward to be on or near the equator. Right. For Rome, that is. With the astronomy program, we can move position to match the sun and the moon position. This proves the axis of the Earth has tilted Assuming the orbit of the moon has remained as it was, which my calculations agree that it has. Now the distance 
from the Vatican is 4658.6 kilometers or 4659 and is from Hebrew 6466 a primitive root to do or make systematically and habitually especially to practice commit evil do er make er ordain work er from Hebrew the, 465 the actual equator the, the regardless of the ship right so the the old equator if you like uh, yeah. well, measuring to the Vatican it tells you it's evil yeah from the equator right do but I So what we have, Hebrew Dictionary 4658, from 5307, fall, that is decadence, concretely a ruin, specifically a carcass, carcass, fall and ruin. Where the carcass is, there the eagles gather. It's probably... <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun PowerPoint. Hang on, folks. <laughs> All oh, right. So now in Greek, it is a savage, and Francis is certainly a savage, an arrogant, self-important, loves the limelight, and boasts self. Now, who was it that was reported that he, he all he wanted was just to? That was when he was in his priesthood. In his he priesthood. He just wanted the limelight. Right. He wasn't interested in nothing else. Right. He just wanted recognition. Uh, now, of course, uh, before well. While he was a priest, he was charged with child rape and kidnapping of priests. This is during the military junta from 76 to 83. And this, of course, has repeated itself with the kidnapping of Father Giuseppe Cervello. He was charged with treason for supporting Pope Benedict and having belief in myself as Christ. And then, of course, we've got Sister Maria Della Rosa is missing as well, and Pope Benedict in a virtual prison unable to communicate with anybody, especially with us. That was the uh, uh, all communication cut off with the Christ. And, um, of course, all the news concerning him in the... Well, we have George Gaswain. Oh, yes, his private secretary is still George Gaswain, who knows exactly what has been going on and uh, is proving himself to be Lucifer, flushed out by saying and doing nothing. This is the second coming of the Christ that he is sitting on the knowledge of it to prove. Never before in the history of the church has one man come forward, the head of the church, yes. and said Christ is back. Yeah, recognized. And as George, sitting on his ass. Yeah. All right, so Pope Benedict will become Pope again. He has recognized Christ is back and written an apostolic letter stating the saviour of the world is here. Brian Leonard go lightly marshal, and Francis has imprisoned him in the Vatican, and his thugs have sent us emails saying Father Giuseppe Civello was shot dead on April the 13th, 2013. Psalms 118, verse 22, the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. The Great Pyramid, 454.5 feet, shows the capstone is missing, being rejected as the base was reduced by 286.1 pyramid inches. This indicates the pyramid represents man who is without the outer garment of 144,000 and unable to recognize God in the flesh when he was reborn. Okay. <laughs> Love you too much, baby. <laughs> All right, moving right along. <laughs> well, July, the point is the, the number for the height of the pyramid times two is the length of sunlight for the day for July the 4th. Ah, today. All right. 1162.6 equals the age that Christ married, the product of mankind. 1162.6 weeks of age on April 23rd, 1966, 
1966 in the Hebrew Concordance is Lucifer. Note the height, we'll go back to that previous slide in a minute, height 1162.6 pyramid inches is British measure. The sections a solar year 365.2424 represents the age of the Lord when he married the harlot of Lithgow in Australia, Eileen Joyce Rosewarn. And as Yah just pointed out, the observation of the light on June the 2nd is 4.54 a.m. Well, that's the, the yeah, well, that, well, that's, that's supposed to be the sunrise, 4.54, but mm. yeah. Yeah, but the time duration from sunrise to sunset yeah. is twice that number. Right, marvellous. Okay, so going back one. <laughs> okay, here we go. Aurora. <laughs> 35th course axis, 365, 2.4, 762.6. That's a, a British ancient measure right. of land. Aurora? Aurora is, yeah. Ah, okay. That's why when you measure up across and down, yes. you've got two segments of 365, yes, that's right. 2.4, right. plus the height of the 35th, which is the thickest masonry layer. Right. And it is 1162.6 oh, from the base, obviously. Right. Okay. Love you too much, baby. Okay. We're on the 2nd of July, still at 5 a.m. Bright, 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 bright skies, and it's been that way for a little over an hour. 6 a.m. July the 2nd. 7 a.m. July the 2nd. 8 a.m. July the 2nd. Note the... Uh, Madonna. Hmm. To offer home. We all know that Jesus Christ loves Elvis. Good man. Just going to find which slide I'm up to now. 28. Here we go. 9 a.m. 2nd of July. 10. You can see the flaring coming in from the left of the camera. 11 a.m. 12. There it is. The sun. Finally. Run. 32. <laughs> slide 30. I'm singing the slide numbers. Okay, here we are at 1 p.m. July the 2nd. Got no idea how many times I went through this to make the sequence. Sure the sequence and the dates were right. <laughs> July the 2nd, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. That's the finish of the slides for that. Day, but we'll go over them a bit later in this presentation because something interesting goes on. So here we are at midnight. No light for four hours. Night before, 11 p.m. and midnight. Brightest can be at 11 p.m. Yet the sun was to have set over an hour before. Here we are, 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. Look at the difference there. And yet the sun has not risen. Uh, all right, you can read that slide. I'm just going to skip through this because, uh, okay, here we go. Yes, note the flaring of the sun. It's the flaring is what it's all about. Now here we are on the 3rd of July, midday. Mid down the third. Actually, is the same day, <laughs> an hour later. <laughs> Some of these slides were very. Here we go at 2 p.m. on the third, 3 p.m. on the third, and then, now this is the unusual part, 4 p.m. on July the third. Totally covered by clouds, no indication of the sun being there at all. Same for five. Six o'clock, you can see that the sun light begins to heat the clouds and they start to evaporate. There'll be another slide later on where you can see this. Okay. Now, coming down to the trees. 
the trees were actually, are actually going to come up in a few slides away from this. But looking at the leaves of the tree in sequence, we see the light is coming from the viewer's side. This can only mean the light is coming from the dwarf sun. In the next slide, the sun is being tracked for three hours and is not appreciably declining to set below the horizon. It suggests as well, follow the track, it simply turns off, gone out for several hours, while the dwarf is acting like a guardian to, that maintains life conditions. We looked at temperatures around the world and no city was unaffected, either extreme heat or cold, outside, way outside of their average temperatures that they should be. Example, um, Belleville, Illinois, 62 degrees, two days before. Yeah, and then, and then 117 on the same day it was 62 in Belleville, it was 117 over in Redding, California. Bizarre. Now, the solar nuclear flu fusion, fusion rate converts hydrogen to helium at a rate of 657 million tonnes per second. And that is the amount of times that the word Lord is found in the New Testament of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. Now the path of the sun is almost horizontal, indicating the sunset is of a very short duration with four hours darkness to be interrupted by the dwarf sun above the visible level as a bright ball to be a flash of white light saturating the sky. It appears it insulates the sun's rays, levelling off temperatures. So... indicates it's about to run out of energy at the surface and will require time for the internal output to catch up. The sun itself is subject to the northern hemisphere's north pole. The sun's north pole is reacting to it and is repelled, but a flip of the sun physically is prevented by the rotation of the sun. Being a molten gas ball, the rotational period is broken into five zones, the poles and the equatorial region, rotating at the same speed of the moon orbit around the Earth. Locked to it, the moon demonstrates the reason why its orbit is what we see in a lunar cycle. Oh, you sing back. You sing. <laughs> I want to tell you something, baby. <laughs> What dog? Where awake is my heart on fire. <laughs> Getting back to the North Pole, 34 days, 7 Burning days, and 25 days. <laughs> then the South, 30 days, and the South Pole, 34 days. Add the three, and the average is 29.66 days. The Here's your moon arm on fire, cycle. too. <laughs> it's not more than fire? Heart. Heart. <laughs> 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 well, now, what is the German word for exit? Hartfart. No, Hartfart. <laughs> and I've been speaking German all my life and didn't know. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll fart. I laughed when I saw that. And uh, all down the freeway, of course, all these signs saying Hartfart, Hartfart, A U S. Art. I was trying to and, give up and I ran out of <laughs> <laughs> Anna, what does art mean? She says, oh, exit. <laughs> now, what is exit in Italian? Do you know the word yet? <laughs> no, you don't, do you? I can tell. Well, it's uschita. Uschita. <laughs> Show me the uschita. Quick. <laughs> All right. Now, the mystery of the sun's outer layers from... 25 million degrees Fahrenheit at the solar core, the temperature drops to 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the photosphere. Scientists consistently wrong say, according to the second law of thermodynamics, heat cannot be conducted from cooler to warmer. The temperature should continue to decrease beyond the photosphere 
But then the mystery occurs. The chromosphere is hotter than the photosphere, and the corona is even hotter. <laughs> it's alright folks, there's silence because I'm trying to get the words out to sing. <laughs> okay, so what we have is an indication of the influence money has on all universities. The big, the big backers, the big bankers, uh, well, thing, are the same that dominate all things, totally antichrist so that laws are made up to suit an agenda. Out of that, magnetic motors are deemed impossible. I built several. In fact, over-unity was discovered in 1235 by a French artist-scientist. However, it was all stopped. Any wonder I have to come back into a world turned into hell? And so deep-rooted has the brainwashing become is it any wonder Christ is rejected by churches and scientists alike as all are dominated by Zionism, Khazar, Satanism? So I must comfort the innocent and educate the masses. The sun is therefore predicted to go out for three days, but we have a benefit the new solar system, which has a new Earth and its sun emitting a new kind of light that will prevent total annihilation of life on Earth. This new light saturates the damaging sunlight. Mind you, if you're an evil bastard, you've got no ah, I was waiting for the catch. <laughs> <laughs> it's the light of God. Ah. What? I'm about to say something about it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's the meek who inherit the earth. It's the evil that will be shown the off spot. By the angels. It's a wrap. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? Okay, where am I? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Without the new light, the sun would build up as it flares, as we see in the following slide. Left, we've got a huge flare. Then less. Note the rays. Then less again. It's getting smaller and smaller. The black dot is protecting the lens. So intense is the light. Getting back to 4 a.m. on July the 2nd. The dwarf sun is to the right and this side of the tree at 4 a.m. Remember, sunrise is not until 4.54. Well, if I was wise, I'd get it, right? However, well, men just don't get it. fools rush in. But I on the 2nd of July. The dwarf sun is to the right and this side of the tree. 6 a.m. Right and this side of the tree. 7 a.m. Light is now centre and this side of the tree. It is now left and this side of the tree at 8 a.m. 9. Left. This side of tree. 10 a.m. 2nd of July still, luckily. <laughs> More left, this side of the tree, bright light. And as we see the bright flare from the sun lighting the left side of the tree. Midday, July the 2nd, 2013. Less than before, but the sun is flaring. 454.5 minutes after sunrise. <laughs> and before sunset? No. Really? 
less than before, but the sun is flaring light and projecting sharp rays and lens flare with three spheres. The sun flaring light at 1 p.m. on July the 2nd. On the far side, bounces off clouds, then onto the... There's a word missing, of the tree. <laughs> ah, we'll just have fun with this one. 2 p.m., same day, sun flaring light on the far side of the tree, and no, nearby, nearby clods. <laughs> we've done away with clouds, we've got clods now. <laughs> See, coming in the clods, eh? <laughs> oh, it could be a Dutchman. That could be a Dutchman, be absolutely. <laughs> coming in the clods. Ah, no, the nearby clods on top of Haas Gable. Where's Clark? <laughs> 3 p.m. Is it still the 2nd of July? Yes, hopefully. We've got to check the little <laughs> imprint date up in the corner with the camera. <laughs> Here it is. Mid sky. 1600 or 4 p.m. Same date. And there we have it. Now, this is what is interesting because if we go back to the day before, this is the previous day at 5 p.m., 1700 hours, July the 1st. So we're no longer on July the 2nd. Sun flaring got a slight sunlight should brighten one area of the clouds, but none is seen. The sun has dimmed dramatically, not far off going out. Yes, those clouds wouldn't be there if the sun was Yeah. Because sun these are not flaring. Clouds. This is the whole point. Yeah, these clouds are clouds. These are real clouds. And they're condensation caused by the drop in temperature which is the dew point reached, where moisture is then suspended as a vapor. Dew point. Not dew point. Dew point. <laughs> At which point, point does a dew become dew? <laughs> depends on the phones, doesn't it? It does. Okay, now look at this. 7 p.m., just an hour later. Where have all the clouds gone? Yeah. They've gone because the sun is flaring. Is spiking the temperature, yeah, the just fantastic. yeah, and the the clouds go. They've gone. Eight p.m. Clouds come again. Why? Because the sun has suddenly got a whole lot cooler, and that so the clouds immediately condense, cooling. Nine, twenty two hundred hours. Now sunset again was at twenty one fifty four for this day. It remains the same for about four days in a row. Can't walk out. Sunset, pink glow, no light on far tree. This side, but light on right of the close tree. This is a real test, isn't it? Can I stay still or talk normally while Elvis is playing in the background? No chance. On together. Then, oh, oh, you do whatever, babe. It's a suspicious mind. Suspicious right? mind. Ooh. <laughs> Minds. Okay, so where are we now? We're at 11 p.m. on July the 1st. What's this? Oh, of course, this is what we're talking about. Well, not really. Two days. But this is the seventh month, July. Okay. 11 p.m., 1st of July. Bright light from the right, but light on this side of the tree and gables. Then in an instant it is pitch black. But low horizon light producing compressed wavelengths into visible light remains slight overcast due to cool atmosphere. Here we go, it switched over. It's three seconds past midnight. Now July the 2nd. Rawr. Kentucky rain. Hello, Catherine. Thinking about you, hon. Catherine from Kentucky. <laughs> Originally, not now. <laughs> How's it go? Come out to visit us? Great witness. Awesome. Witness. witness to the Pope? Absolutely. Witnessed everything. I'm not going to try to explain these. I just want to sing. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. The next one. Look at this. Bam! 4 a.m. on the 2nd of July. 2013. What does it all mean? The dwarf sun is to the right and this side of the tree at 4 a.m. This is caused by the dwarf sun raising as the earth turns. Note, the light is on the right of the clouds. This is not sunlight. The sun rises from the left. Are we sure about that? Lately, <laughs> nobody's sure about anything, are we? <laughs> okay, midday, 2nd of July, sunlight reflects off the left side, but not off the house gable. It is on the far side of the house. The dwarf sun is to be T double O low. <laughs> Here we are, back to <laughs> midnight. Now this is interesting because the date stamp is not there. It could be midnight, 21st and 2nd of July. It could be midnight, 22nd and 3rd of July. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, here we go. July the 3rd. Light from the dwarf sun glowing from the horizon. Same with less intensity each day as the orbit gains altitude and alters wavelength, dimming the visible light. Note the little squiggly lines down below. On June the 5th, 2013, this was the access point, Hearn Bay, United Kingdom, showing the new equator. Pole shift of 52 degrees, 22 minutes and 849 seconds. Putting the new south pole axis near New Zealand and the new equator tilt of 17.18 degrees. On July the 3rd, the observation of the moon orbit at noon should have seen us out there <laughs> on the deck, on our deck, getting a, getting a handle on this. We got it right now. We got it right. That's what an epithet is. It's a handle. That's what we were doing yesterday. Remember that epithet came up? We were getting a handle on it. So Rome was sitting on the equator. A slow wobble shifting the axis once again. Dwarf sun. Salvation. Avoiding sun's rays come January when we are two, sorry, 92 million miles away from the big sun. In other words, two million no miles closer. Without the dwarf? Absolutely. Barbecue and time. we had that lovely report from Ashley Lennon, another lovely girl, Illinois, Chicago this time. Yes, again, much, much cooler temperature, 63 degrees, but she talked about the white light for the last three days filling the sky. It wasn't sunlight, white light. And it wasn't until the afternoon that um, the blue sky. What's this one? I gave you a mountain? Okay. <laughs> There's a scripture verse about that. <laughs> So what is happening? Now, this top line, the, in other words, the line in the middle of squiggles, the same number of light waves as the lower line. What's that mean? Whoa. Where no one else is standing. Where everything I do is wrong. Oh, um, not everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you guys are reading along there. You can figure it out. <laughs> it's quite clear that one. Everything I do, wonder, wonder. <laughs> All right, I'm just letting people read here. So the colder the atmosphere, the denser the atmosphere. Therefore, in Antarctica, the air molecules are denser. And yeah, your kiss to me is worth a fortune on eBay. <laughs> and just a reminder: get a load of this. Remember this day: no shadows, absolutely none. I'll skip that one, but no shadows, no shadows, 
no shadows. Look at these people here. No shadows, not at all, anywhere. None. Nine. Ah, and this was uh, taken off the internet. It's what the sunset used to look like. Reason why love me as I do. Okay, well that um, slide just there as you're reading, presently as of this date, June the 4th, this is an older uh, PowerPoint, but uh, it, the same applies. What's today? Today's July the 4th, one month later. July the 4th, 2013. We and our disciples have literally flooded the internet with information concerning the arrest of His Holiness and the taking over of his papal office and kidnapping of Father Giuseppe Cervello and Sister Maria Del Rosa. And no Del one Rosa. gives us stuff. No one gives. 11 countries we've been to. Did we find one person? Except the poor Pope, what can we do about? Nobody. Nah. Absolutely. No. The, the, and here in Rome, they're worse than yeah, anybody. The one, the one woman they showed the most concern was on top of Glastonbury Tour, Marcus Town. Uh, Anna. Anna was her name. Anne. Anne was her name. Yeah. Anyway. And here he is, the Lord Jesus Christ, the image within the Shroud of Turin, recognised and announced by Pope Benedict. That's all we want. Thank you very much. Close the door. Over and out. Now we have to finish with an appropriate song. You choose. What were we talking about this morning? About you and Stefano from downstairs. Ah, Stefano, we, we Italian family living downstairs. Stefano, one of the sons of Giuseppina, and he broke out into song. And man alive, has he got a voice? Ill diva, move over. So. I woke up with the bright thought this morning that Yar and Stefano should sing Elvis together. Yar in English. Stefano singing Italiano for song Ghetto. <laughs> ghetto? Well, what was the one you were suggesting? Well, not Ghetto. Not Ghetto, no. Something else, wasn't it? No. I thought uh, it was a surprise. Yes, okay. Stand by for that. That would be glorious. Oh, here we go, over and out. Bye, folks. If you can make sense of any of this, please write to me and let me know. <laughs> Explain it to me. Bye.